Welcome to another Power in the Word message presented by Pastor Dr. Gerald Parker Sr. Also join us for our noonday Nothing But the Word Bible study starting at 12 noon each Wednesday. Brought to you by Pilgrim Progress Missionary Baptist Church Ministries located at 1301 North Magnolia Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Where we say, let's do it God's way. Song says, Who can stand against the Lord? No one can, no one will. Who can stand against our King? No one can, no one will. Oh, 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 the victory belongs to Jesus. Yeah, victory belongs to Him. Yeah. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Come on, everybody, who can stand against the Lord? No one can, no one can, no one will, no one will. Who can stand against our King? Who can stand against the King? Nobody can, no one can, no one will. Come on, let's lift it up and say, oh. oh, oh. We stood up this morning for one purpose, and that is to make Jesus famous. Somebody say he's already famous. In many people's lives, he's not famous. He's not known. And so my job today is to make Jesus famous in your life. And we've been preaching from the Gospel of St. Mark for at least two years and we were, this time last year, we was in chapter 9. Now we're in chapter 16, the last chapter in the Gospel of St. Mark. And these first four verses in St. Mark, the 16th chapter, verse 1 through 4, will teach us something about God. Uh, and it says this in Matthew, the 16th chapter, beginning at verse 1. It says, and when the Sabbath was passed... Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulchre at the rising of the sun, that sepulchre is the tomb where Jesus was buried. And they said among themselves, who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? That was a concern. But praise God. Now, praise God is not in the verse, but I just had to say praise God. And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. Our God is able. We're going to have trouble in our life. There's no way around it. We, you were born. We were born. But the good news is that in the midst of our troubles, God will fix it. And don't you ever doubt that our God is able. And notice in that, that, that verse it says our God is. And the reason why God is able is because God is. Y'all don't get that. I said the reason why God is able is because God is. God is all-powerful. The reason why God is there is because God is all-knowing. And the reason why God is there is because God is everywhere at the same time. 
And I want you to know here today that as you leave from this church today, just leave here knowing that our God is able. And in these verses that we come before us this morning in Mark the 16th chapter, verse 1 through 4, we see clearly without, without a doubt, without no doubt in our mind that our God is able. I don't have time to give you a lot of context, but at this point in these verses, Jesus has died. And I want to remind all of you here today that our Savior came here for one purpose, and that is to die for our sins. And that word for means in place of, instead of. So when he died on the cross, he died in our place. And, 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 and he did die. And when he, we found out last week that when he died, he, uh, the, the nails did not kill him. It was not the crown around his head that killed him. He died, as old folks used to say, he died when he got ready. He did, he did, he did. And then he said, the reason why I know he died when he got ready, because he looked up, first of all, he said in John 19, 30, it is finished. Then he said these words, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And the scripture says he dropped his head and then gave up the ghost, gave it up. Did nobody take his life from him? He gave it up. He said, Father, into your hands, I give you my spirit. He died. And he was buried. And he was buried in Jerusalem too. And I'm, I'm going to try to set this up, is that some people don't know when was he buried, how was he buried. Well, if you read John the 19th chapter and also in Mark the 60th chapter, you'll read where there was a member of the Sanhedrin by the name of Nicodemus. And also Joseph and Amorathea, they came to Pilate and asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Some of us don't know that. And they took his body down from the cross and took 100 pounds of ointment and they anointed his body. Put him, they put him in a tomb and they anointed his body with, with these 100 pounds of spices. During those times, they did not... They did not uh, uh, in, they did not embalm bodies. The Romans embalmed bodies, but the Jews did not embalm. They simply put them in a swaddling, in swaddling material, and they put ointment on them and spices and sweet spices and wrapped the body up to, to try to deter some of the smell. And that's what they did to the master. But guess what? Guess what? While these two men were doing that, the scripture says that Mary Magdalene and three other women watched them as they put the body into the tomb. Now, we get some of this. They, they, they watched them. They looked. They, 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 they were far off. They, they, they dared not to be seen, but they noticed what they had done with the body of Jesus. They saw them wrap his body in swaddling, in swaddling material, and they saw them put the spices on him and, all, and, they, and left him in the tomb. And the scripture says, and they rose the stone over that rocky tomb. But that wasn't all. The scripture says in Mark the 16th chapter verse 1, and when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. Hold it. Wait a minute. I thought that a few days ago that, that Nicodemus and Joseph had anointed the body of Jesus. Why would these women want to come two days later on the third day to go to anoint the body of Jesus? I'll tell you why. I tell you, I, I can't explain, but I believe that they thought that the men didn't do a good job. That they, they did a rush because it was a rush job because they were trying to take the body of Jesus down from the cross before, yeah, uh, Friday, before 6 p.m. Because at 6 p.m. would when, would when the Passover would, not the Passover, that's when the, uh, uh, the, the Sabbath day would start. And they were trying to bury him before the Sabbath, before the Sabbath day. And so they waited that Friday, they waited that Saturday. But early Sunday morning, Early, that's what it says here. And when the Sabbath was passed, 
Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. I want you to see this now. now, now it's, uh, Joseph and Nicodemus did the best they could. But those women looked at that. They said, now, they did a good job, but I think we can do better. There's something about women that want things done exactly right. There's nothing wrong with that now. We men do the best we can. We do the best we can with what we have, but the women will always come around Amen. and say that wasn't quite done the way it ought to be done. Yes, so on that morning, these three women, now Mark says it's three women, but if you read St. Saint, Saint Luke, you'll find that there were other women that were with them while they traveled, yeah, from Jerusalem to the outskirts to that tomb where Jesus had been buried. It was early. Mark says there in verse 2, and very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, so it was on a Sunday, they came unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. Now, I want you to know this now. Why would they want to get up early in the morning and go while it was still dark, yeah, to go to a tomb where dead people were? i tell you why. Because they love the Lord. What motivated them to get up and risk their lives with, with this, with this and, and spend their money? Because the scripture says they bought sweet spices, and those sweet spices were expensive. And so they, the women that they saw, they saw Nicodemus, they saw Joseph bury Jesus, but they wanted to do it for themselves. I, I wish I'd gone. And so what they did was they came together. Everybody said together. They were not split up. They came together. And there were more than three women because if you read the Gospel of St. Luke, you'll find out there were other women with them. They might have been 15 or 20. But they wanted to come because they were motivated by the love of Jesus Christ. Look at me now. This is a lesson before we get to, to them. Whatever you do for the Lord, make sure it's out of devotion and not duty. Some of us do things because it's my duty. Don't go no wrong with duty. But if you do it because of devotion, I'm devoted to the master. And I'm doing this because I'm loved by the master. And since, and since he loved me and I love him, I'm doing this so that I could show my love for him. But I'm doing this because his love for me motivates me to give him my best. And so this year, as you go to 2024, make sure that you work for the Lord out of devotion and not just duty. And then they were walking. And while they were walking in the dark, yeah, the sun, the S-U-N, had not risen up. But the S-O-N had already got up. Y'all don't get that. It was still, it was quite dark early in the morning. And they didn't know that Jesus had risen, but they were on their way to anoint the body of Jesus. And while they were on their way, help me, Jesus, help me, the women talked among themselves. And they said, you know what? When they put Jesus in that tomb, they rolled that huge stone over the door of the grave. And some of y'all did not know this, but those stones that they put over some of those graves, they were at least 2,000 pounds, heavy, large. And I'm sure that when Joseph and Nicodemus, there, they had other men to help them roll that stone over the grave. And so when the women were walking, they were, help me, Lord, they said, you know what? They said, what? When we get there, who's going to roll the stone away? We, we, we have a, a purpose, but we don't have the power. We, we, we want to. We are willing, but we are not able and that stone, that stone represent obstacles that 
That stone represents hindrances. That, that stone represents problems that will come in our lives when we attempt to work for the Lord. You can rest assured that when you make up your mind to do something for Jesus, there will always be some stone or some hindrance or some problem, something in your way to prevent you from doing what you're trying to do. That's the way around it. That, that, stone, represent, that stone represents stumbling block. That stone represents hindrances. That stone represents powerlessness. That stone represents stumbling blocks. That stone prevented them from getting to Jesus. And I want you to know right now, as you come into this church, as you leave from here, some of y'all are looking at some stones right now that's preventing you think that you think is preventing you from doing the Lord's work. Some of these stones are preconceived. And some of these stones, we make up ourselves. I, I don't think I can do that because I don't have enough money. Or I don't think I can do that because I don't have enough sense. Or I know I need to do that, but, uh, but uh, I don't have the power. I don't have. I don't have. Those women were concerned uh, uh, about that. They, they were saying to themselves, we don't have the power. We are not able. And they were concerned about that stone being. And see, they didn't know. They didn't. This is what they didn't know. Look at me now. Not only did they, they have to deal with that heavy stone, but they didn't know that Pilate had the stone sealed. And they had put the emperor's seal on it. They, he, they didn't know that the Roman soldiers were, 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 had put, were put around the stone. So there were two parts. They had the huge stone. The stone was sealed, and there were Roman soldiers around the stone. They didn't know who was before them. And I want to let you know right now, as you go into 2024, you don't know what's before you. Look at me. I'm, I'm trying to help you today. But I want you to know today as I stand here, I'm almost through. Our God is able. Whatever you're going to come across today, I will remind you, our, say, say it with me, our God, our God. is able. And but, but what I like about these women, thank you, Lord, when they thought about the obstacle that they might have to face, not one time did you hear the women say, you know what, that stone is too heavy for us. We might as well go on back home now. Guess what they did? Although they perceived that it's going to be a heavy stone, but they kept on going toward the tomb. Although that stone is too heavy for us, we don't know who is going to roll that stone away, but we're still going. And I want to let you all know today that as you face your stones, don't worry about who's going to roll the stone away. Just keep on going in Jesus' name. But here's the good news. I'm closing now. Here's the good news. And the good news is, guess what? It, when they got there, y'all yeah, don't have to shout with me. That's all right. I said, when they got there, the stone that they thought they couldn't roll over, guess what happened? The stone, that huge stone, that 2,000-pound stone, yeah, 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 had been rolled away. Somebody say, how did they do it? They didn't do it. If you read Matthew, the 28th chapter, verse 1 and 2, you know what happened? On their way, yeah, to the graveyard, God dispatched an angel. An angel, just one angel came down, and that angel rolled that stone away. But that's not all that angel did. When that angel rolled that stone away, he sat on it. That lets us know that whatever problem we have, God is able. And not only, he, he, he sat on the very problem that they thought they had. And I want you to know right now, as you go to work for the Lord, just remember, don't worry about the stone. God has power. Like I said right now, our God is able. But one more thing I want to say, our God not only is able, but our God is willing. Y'all don't get that, do you? So I hear some amens here. You see, you got a lot of people that are able to help you, but they're not willing. And you've got other people who are willing to help you, but they're not able. But as I stand here today, as I close this sermon out, our God is not only able, he's willing. 
And the stone was rolled away because God dispatched an angel. One more lesson before I close here. A lot of times, the very things that we think will hinder us, sometimes we think the worst of what's going to happen. But some of you here today, you're thinking about this year. You're thinking about what's going to happen tomorrow. You're thinking about maybe earlier this month or later on in the year. You think of this is going to take place. Stop right now. Stop worrying about what's going to happen. Look at me now and just thank God for now. Look at me now. Look at me. Please look. Please look. Take a deep breath. I know you got some things before you. I know you got some, but don't worry about those things. I thank God for right now. Thank God that you're breathing now. Thank God that your heart is beating now. Thank God that you're in church now. Thank God that things are well. And don't worry about tomorrow. Thank God for now, because now is all that we have. Thank him for right now. So, Lord, we praise you and thank you for now. We ain't worried about tomorrow. We're not worried about next week. We're not worried about three months from now. Thank you right now for who you are. So I just called to let you know that our God is able. I close with these verses. I'm going to take God's word to hammer this truth down. Ephesians 3 and 20 it says this, now unto him. Whew. That went to him. That is able. Let's stop right now. Let's stop and let's just praise God right now because our God is able. Let's all over the church, let's just praise God. Just say, our, don't say my, say, my God is able. I don't know what's going to come before me, but whatever it is, my God is able. And say to yourself, I can, just say it, say with me, I can't do it. Say, say, I can't do it. Say, I'm not able. But praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My God is able. And not only is he able, he's willing. What is he able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think? But hold it now. This is what I like about God. When he commissioned you to do something and you say, you say, I can't do it, you forgot one thing. You have power that's in you. And the power is the Holy Spirit. And so the scripture says, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us right now. There's power working in us right now. And that power is the Holy Spirit. And we ought to, so stop saying, I can't do this. Stop saying, this is too much for me. I want you to know right now, you are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. And since God is able, and since there's power working in us, you need to start your year off by saying, I can do all things through Christ who is strengthening me. Somebody said, well, I, I, yeah, that's what, that's what God did 2,000 years ago. He rolled the stone away, but I've got good news for you. Guess what? This is a new year, yes, sir. but the same God. Yes, sir. Our God never changes. In Malachi 3 and 6, he says, for I am the Lord, and I change not. That same God that just spoke and the world came into existence, he's still the same. That same God that saw darkness and said, let there be light, he's still the same. Yes, that same God that freed Israel from Egypt is still the same. That same God that raised Lazarus from the grave, he's still the same. He's still all-powerful. He's still all-knowing. He's everywhere at the same time. So whatever you do, just say to yourself, our God is able just to see you through. I don't know how y'all feel about it, but I'm so glad to announce that our God is able. 
I don't want to use a personal illustration, but I got to tell you, I remember, yeah, a little while ago when God called me to preach. And there I had some obstacles in front of me. My first obstacle was I didn't know much about the Bible. And I told the Lord, Lord, I just don't think that I can do that because I don't have knowledge of the Bible as I should. But then I had another rock. I had another obstacle. And my obstacle was I had a terrible stuttering problem. Every other word I'd stutter. And I said, how can I preach? And I got a stuttering problem. But I saw the stone. But the Lord said, you go and preach anyway. So on that Sunday, yeah, a long time ago, I I stood up, and guess what happened? I, I had a stuttering problem when I got up there, but yeah, when I opened my mouth, I said, it's good for us to be here, and the stuttering was gone. And this lets me know that whatever problem that you have in your life, he will take it away. I've got one more thing to say, that there's nothing too hard for God. Can I kind of go in? There's nothing to hard. So what you do is just stand and every day of your life, just put your trust in God. Psalm 6, 2 and 8 says, trust in him at all times and he shall sustain you. I've held y'all long enough, but see, they, he had rolled the stone away, but when they got into the, to the tomb, guess what happened? The angel said, why search you the dead? Uh, living among the dead. You came here looking for the master, but now he has risen from the grave. As I stand here today, I'm sitting down now. I want you to know that Jesus died on the cross. They buried him in Joseph's new tomb. But guess what? Put on progress and visitors early Sunday morning. Jesus got up from the grave with all power in his hand. Thank you, Lord. And he went back to heaven, but one day we'll see him face to face. So whatever you do, just stay with me. I just stay with me. Our God. Oh, you're not saying going to say our God is able. Turn to somebody and look at him in the eye and say, Our God is able. There's nothing too hard for God. Just trust him. I don't know how y'all feel about it, but this is how I feel. I will trust in the Lord until I die. So as we go to our seat, just remember our God is able and God is willing. And all you got to do is call on the Lord and he will hear your cry.